It is indeed a remarkable coincidence that uh, I am speaking to you all about a very important subject, which is the nuclear energy program for our country. How can we thrust ourselves with any form of energy unless we have a clear roadmap about what is the kind of energy that we need in the next 25-30 years? I don't think we really have done a proper study which highlights and projects what our requirements will be in the foreseeable future, say, of a 30 or 35 year time frame. But assuming we accept what the slender figures that we have received from the Planning Commission, then to consider going nuclear for a small percentage of our fuel energy requirements is to say the least uh, very unprofessional. I think what is more important is to see what we need, what are all the possible sources we can harness and then see how best we can do it cheaply and safely. I'm afraid the decision made yesterday, that too on the anniversary, 25th anniversary of Chernobyl accident by our top office in the country, the Prime Minister's office, reaffirming their intent to go ahead with the Jaitapur project in the Konkan was indeed a great tragedy. Because here is a case where the rest of the world is completely engaged in checking out the safety standards and the minimal safety requirements for nuclear power. There we go happily and brazenly ordering a new set of reactors which have not even been tested and proven till to date. I mean the Arriva French a European pressure water reactor. Nobody knows how this thing will perform. There's not a single reactor of this variety anywhere in the world. I don't see why India should volunteer to become a guinea pig for this kind of experimentation. Surely Indian lives are as precious, if not more than the others. The United States, France itself, Germany and many other countries have pointed out numerous flaws in this reactor to which the manufacturers have yet to answer. So in this state of the levels of knowledge we have about this reactor and its design, what is the hurry for us to go ahead with this? We have forgotten everything and we have Fukushima, the latest of these failures in front of us to study. As it is today, uh, nuclear energy provides less than 1% of our national energy consumptions today. Even futuristically speaking, it will provide at best about 7 to 8% of our energy requirements in the 30, 35 year time frame we are talking about. Then how critical is it then? It's a question to ask. And without doubt, the most expensive means of providing a source of energy to boil water, to turn it into steam, to turn a turbine, seems to me to be a very expensive way of going about it. And I feel very sad in a country like ours, which is so blessed with the sun, which, by the way, is the most powerful nuclear reactor in the world. Wind, tide, and other forms, tidal energy. I think it's a shame that uh, we are now going, rushing into this source of nuclear power. I believe the wise thing to have done at this point in time is to have studied this carefully, call it a halt, be completely and totally happy that this is the right decision and then let us move forward.
with our eyes wide open. At the moment it appears that there are other compulsions, I wish I knew what they were, that are forcing us into this head-on deep dive into the deep end of an ocean. And uh, many times people have talked about, oh, solar and wind require so much of land and we will harm the farmers much more by those sources as opposed to, as opposed to nuclear, which is supposed to be free and uh, cheap and clean, which is totally a falsehood because it's certainly not cheap. In these costs, nobody is projecting what will the fuel costs are going to be, how frequently they have to be renewed. Nobody is talking about waste disposal, how much is that going to cost, if at all we know how it can be disposed of. Sadly, nobody, but nobody has ever bothered to find out what happens when the reactor life is over. How much money will we have to spend to put it in a sacrophagus to prevent any problems arising after it has served its life. Today they are talking about for Chernobyl, for example, they want to raise another billion euros so that they can put a fresh layer of concrete on top of the reactor, which had gone out of control 25 years ago. Are we going to do this to all the nuclear reactors that we're going to have, futuristically speaking? I know we may not be around, but is that the legacy we want to leave behind for our grandchildren or great-grandchildren? something to think about. I hope we have some wise men and women who will take these decisions after careful thought so that we can assure a reasonable lifespan for the future generations. Those who have already been afflicted by this unforeseen radioactive exposure, be it here, there or elsewhere, are already suffering. And uh, the usual, if I may say so, casual answer is, oh, how do you know this was due to that or due to this? I think there is enough evidence now in the world which shows that most forms of cancer in proximity areas to nuclear power plants are caused by radiation leaks. Of course, a radiation accident, there is no limit. Even Japan is rethinking, France is rethinking, but the only country which is not thinking, leave alone rethinking, in my views, India.